Welcome back. It's Matt Montgomery from the gym here at NAS Fallon. Okay, so we're out on the football field, the multi-use field. It's about 9 a.m. and the sun's up really high, but it's nice and breezy, so it's a little bit cool. But, especially being up here in the high desert environment, I want you guys to make sure that you are hydrated. Even if you don't feel sweaty out here, you want to keep drinking because with the dry humidity, that sweat just gets evaporated so fast that you don't even realize really that you're sweating and that you're losing and you're leaching moisture. So make sure that you've got hydration with you when you're outdoors. You can check out a cooler from the gym. Those, uh, those Gatorade coolers you see on the sidelines of football, we can rent those out to you with ice water and um, you can bring that out for your, uh, for your crew if you guys are working out or playing out here. So again, we're, it's about 9 a.m. The field will warm up. So you saw uh, Miss Angel in her previous video um, suffering pretty bad because the, the field was so warm. But it has this, um, this black rubber in it. So it's just like the NFL fields, but it's got this black um, rubber gravel in it. And that just right there, I can feel it, it's hot. So that retains a lot of heat. So when you get down on the deck, um, it can be really, really hot. So later on during the day, just be aware of that. The track is actually a little bit cooler just because it doesn't have that black substrate that will absorb all the heat. So safety first when you're outside, high desert, we're at 4,000 feet altitude, sunscreen if you're susceptible to that kind of stuff. So safety first. So we're gonna warm up. We've got a total body workout that can be done out here on the field. And we've got some basic equipment that you can check out from the gym. And probably you guys have some of this stuff um, already through this whole pandemic. I know Amazon is selling out of fitness equipment left and right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, body weight squats. All right. Just to get warmed up, get that blood moving. The legs, the glutes, the hips, all movement stems from the glutes and the hip pelvic girdle. Okay. So we're going to start it, get that blood flowing and get our heart rate up just a little bit. Okay. Body weight squats. Easy. Stick that butt out just a little bit. Pivot at the hips and the knees. And we're going to come down to the thighs are parallel with the deck. Just like this. So let me turn towards so you get the profile, hips down and back up. Hips down and back up. You get about 10 to 15 reps, get that blood moving. You don't have to do sets, but just get that blood moving and get ready to go. Get breathing, open up that chest. So the next one is gonna be the chest press, shoulder press. So I know all you active duty Navy people are just like, oh really, chest press, shoulder press. So I know it is absolutely repetitive and it seems rudimentary, but it is a very, very valuable uh, movement. So um, please don't disregard it. This is something that you guys can do prior to just about any workout, okay? So chest press, elbows are back, chest is out. You simply just press that imaginary wall, just like that, okay? We're gonna incorporate the shoulder press, arms come up, go all the way. Get through that whole movement. Don't shortchange yourself. You're not doing anything. Stretch through that whole movement, squeeze the chest together. Stretch through that whole movement, squeeze those shoulders together. Keep your back and your upper body posture the same, relative, perpendicular to the deck, just like that. Use that full movement and get the full benefit out of that, okay? Uh, one of the things I see in group PT when the CFLs are leading these courses is that movement goes a little bit too fast. So you're going one, two, three, one, two, three, it's just going too fast, slow that down, okay? So you're gonna slow it down, get the benefit from that movement. It is a very important movement, and that's why it is included in the CFL and NOFS curriculum, okay? So that's another warm up for upper body. Okay. Shoulder shrugs and head rolls, okay? Shoulder shrug, exactly how it sounds. You're just gonna shrug your shoulders, like, I don't know. You know, somebody asks you <laughs> if you did your homework, ah, I don't know. So that's it, that's the shoulder shrug, just like that, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna keep from rolling our shoulders like that, because that moves the joint in weird ways, especially if we're under load. So if a guy has a barbell like this and we're rolling our shoulders like that, that can pull the shoulder joint in ways that it isn't designed to go, okay? I know it seems minuscule and a little uh, um, funny, but it, it, does, it does actually cause issues over time if we're rolling that joint under load. So you're simply just gonna bring your shoulders to your ears just like that, okay? That's the shoulder shrug. That will get the back, the traps, and the neck going. Speaking of the neck, we're going to do the head roll, okay? But we changed the curriculum within the Navy to disinclude rolling out the head to the back. So we're no longer rolling all the way around like that. 
we're just going from shoulder to shoulder. Just like that. Nice and slow, okay? We're not an 80s big hair band. We're not whipping our hair around like this. We're just gonna go nice and slow controlled movement, just like that, okay? If you're like me, you're gonna get a lot of snap, crackle, pops in that neck. I love it, it feels great, but that shows that that, that uh, musculature around the spinal column and the traps and the neck muscles are getting stretched out, ready to go warmed up, okay? Okay, contralateral limb raises or the bird dog. So some of you guys might know this from uh, yoga or Pilates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get down on the deck, table pose. Back is nice and flat. We're not sagging, we're not pushing our belly to the floor, and we're not all humped up like the Halloween cat. We're nice and flat, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take opposing limbs, so our right arm, left leg, and we're gonna point those out. Just like this. Okay, note the position of my heel. My heel is straight out, and my toes are dorsiflexed, pointed back towards the, to my knee. So imagine you're trying to kick down a door with your heel. And that's how you want your heels projected out. That will stretch out the posterior of your leg and glutes. So right now, my glutes, my hammies, my calves, they're all engaged right now, all the way up, including my low back. So by holding this pose, we're stretching out the whole posterior chain and getting it activated our balance and our core strength. So just like that. Hold that for three to five seconds. It should be nice and stable. If you're all over the place, that's fine. You're gonna build up to that, to where you get that balance, to where you can hold that rock steady. Nobody ever does the first exercise perfect. So practice, practice, practice. Just like that. Perfect. All right. Next one is gonna be the sprinter jump, okay? So you've probably seen track and field athletes do this to warm up for their, um, either their sprints or the middle distance runs, probably up to about 800 meters. And you'll see this on the soccer field and the football fields. And uh, it's a great movement to get going. So in recreational activities, perfect for cycling, hiking, running, getting the whole body, the whole chain ready to go, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in place Again, opposing limbs are headed up. Left arm, right leg. And we're simply just gonna jump, just like that, okay? This, um, this movement will build explosiveness and power throughout the entire chain of movement. So we wanna make sure that we're using our entire body all at the same time, okay? So it's a coordination issue. So if you have issues with this right off the bat, take it nice and slow, but use that whole body to the full range of movement. Okay, and then when you're ready, boom, you should explode. Real nice. Ah, I did that wrong. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Okay, so <laughs> coordination issues, I still have them, right? Here we go. Boom, explode up. Use the, the upper body to counterbalance itself just as the lower body does. Boom. Get five or six of those each side, and then you can actually start traveling down, traveling down the field as you do this. Okay, should be nice, powerful bounding. That'll get you warmed up. I'm already a little bit out of breath, but now we're ready to go for the workout. Okay, here's the meat and potatoes of the exercise, the workouts. Um, the, everything is done, that we're doing, can be done outside with minimal equipment. So you see I've got a pair of kettlebells. You can check these out from the gym. I've got a sandbag. You can check that out from the gym, and we've got various weights. And then we've got some medicine balls. Um, we've got a ton of these. So feel free to check this stuff out from the gym, come out, use it outside um, for now until we can um, get the facility open 100%. So um, again, we're outside, we're using gravity to our advantage. If you'll take a quick peek at your PRT, right? Everything on the PRT can be done outside with no equipment, okay? So no excuses, get out here, push ups, sit ups. Uh, the plank is coming and then run, okay? So here we go. I've got the kettlebells out. So those shrugs that we did for uh, the warm-up, we're gonna do what's called a farmer's carry. And we're just gonna grab up the kettlebells of equal weights in each hand. So again, find some weights, find some objects at home that weigh the same, because we don't wanna be unbalanced. And you're simply just gonna carry these up and down the field or the track for as long as you can 
for as heavy as you can. This will work out the traps and the triceps and your grip strength. So being out here in Fallon, we've heard the term, that guy has cowboy strong hands. It's because he's always carrying stuff and using his hands to move heavy objects, okay? So football field's 100 yards long. The track is 400 meters. Challenge yourself. See if you can carry um, a particular amount of weight for a certain distance. Those are 25 pounds. We've got kettlebells in the gym. I believe they go up to 70 pounds a pair. So feel free to come in and, and you know, as low as five or 10 pounds a pair. So if you gotta start somewhere, that's where you start, all right? I've got um, a medicine ball here. So this is a good one for just picking up a heavy object and then letting it go. So this is a 20 pound demolition ball. And what I want you to do is I want you to get down as low as you can, grab up this ball, hug it into your chest, and then stand up straight, okay? So it's just like the squat, but our back is gonna be nice and straight as we come up. Don't push your butt up first and then use your back. We're using our whole body and then heave it over a shoulder, okay? The next time you pick it up, get down, nice and straight, heave it up over the other shoulder. You can do that for reps or you can do that reps for time. So 20 reps as fast as you can, recover for a minute or two, hit it another 20 reps as fast as you can, and repeat. Okay, back down on the deck, we're gonna get down into push-ups with the sandbag drag, okay? So this is gonna be a push-up, but we're gonna add some rotational torque in there, increase our stability throughout our core by doing more than just the plank position, okay? So what we're gonna get down is at either side of the, the sandbag, and we're gonna put that, shoulder, that sandbag just outside of our shoulder. Now we're gonna take a wide stance because we're gonna be taking a hand off the deck. But once we do so, we wanna make sure that our back and our hips stay level, okay? So what we're gonna do is with the right hand, we're gonna reach under, we're gonna grab that bag and drag it across. Release the left hand, reach under, drag that bag across, just like this, okay? Now, we're gonna incorporate that push up in here. So we're gonna get down, push up, grab that bag, push up, grab that bag. Nice challenging exercise. It will help build that stability through the core and it will build strength through that shoulder and the upper back. Okay, here we go. This one is called the broad jump for distance, okay? So this is kind of a uh, obscure exercise. We only see this really in the Olympics. If you watch the NFL Combine, those guys all do that so they can see how much explosiveness and how much strength they have in their entire chain of movement. So this is a very explosive and very strong movement that we're gonna use out here on the football field. So you see I've lined up on the hash marks so that you can keep track of your progression and how far you go, all right? So when I see people jump, a lot of times it's, it's like this, okay? And they're off balance. So what I want is an entire chain of movement explosion, okay? So you're gonna get down, you're gonna get ready, and you're gonna explode out, just like that, okay? Two yards, not bad, just over six feet. Get down, explode, extend that body. That whole body in the air should almost be perfectly straight as you're flying through the air, and then you're gonna use that chain of motion to decelerate and accept that, um, that force when you come back down onto the, onto the turf, okay? Boom, here we go. Boom. Just like that, okay? When I see people jump down or land, a lot of times we get that, that stiff leg. Um, the, the way they stop themselves is just with dead legs, dead hips, and you can feel the shock in your, in your head. So if you're watching this right now, just get up on the ball of your foot and drop down like that. You can feel the shock that's going through your body simply from dropping down two or three inches on heel. You can feel that in your brain, your vision goes crazy for just a second because your body is trying to absorb that shock. So help yourself by recoiling when you come down to absorb all that shock and your body will love yourself for years to come. Here we go. Boom like that okay that's the broad jump you can do that for however many yards you can until you run out of breath or you run out of strength but that's a great exercise to build that explosive power for any sport any recreation that you're doing 
All right, so you've probably seen this tire out here. It's on the football field, and then we have another one on the, uh, the workout area just outside of the gym. These are off the fire trucks, actually, here on base, and they were uh, nice enough to let us have a couple of them. So this is great for uh, tire flipping, building overall body strength, and I might do that in a future video, so stay tuned. But what I'm going to show you right now is the plyo jump. So we've been building up to this. We just did some broad jumps over there where we're using that explosive power to gain distance and altitude. So this jump, plyo jumps, box jumps, whatever you want to call them, we're going strictly for altitude. So we're going to get our feet up here on the platform and then we're going to come back down, okay? So typically what we see in, um, in box gyms and other uh, fitness workouts is we see these folks come up and then we come down like that. That is just fine. However, I'm gonna take it to the next level so that when we come up to the box with a powerful plyo movement, we're gonna do the same when we come down, okay? So what we wanna do is just like that broad jump is we're gonna generate full body power. We're gonna get down, get ready, boom, and we come up to the box. Now, again, we should, we want to be able to get on top of whatever platform that you're dealing with and uh, with as straight a body as possible. Okay, so we see these videos on YouTube where they've got those platforms stacked up to here and they're jumping up, but their knees are up by their ears just to get that, their feet up high enough to where they get onto the box, okay? This one, we want to get up as straight as we can to where our feet just float up onto the platform, okay? So we're gonna do, boom, just like that, okay? There we go. So. I'm not having to contort myself just for the sake of getting as high as possible. We want to do that movement as correctly as possible with as much power as possible, okay? Now, I explained how we're gonna get down from here. We're gonna get up, <laughs> here we go. All right, so when we come down, just like on the broad jump, we want to accept our body's force when we meet the earth. So when we come down, it's known as a negative. Here we go just like that, okay? No stiff legs, no stiff hips. We're gonna act as a shock absorber, just like a full suspension, full suspension bike. Here we go, just like that, okay? And then we're ready from here to move. So if there was a series of platforms, a series of tires, boom, 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 boom. All with that explosive and receptive movement to build power. That is plyometrics. All right, so there's a series of exercises that you can do um, using gravity and minimal equipment. And again, all of this equipment is available to you for checkout from the gym. We just ask that you uh, use it just for the day and then, and then bring it back, okay? So now we're gonna cool down. We've got a couple of cool down exercises. So after a big plyometric total body workout like this, walk around the track, get yourself a couple of laps. That will help flush the lactic acid buildup from those big plyometric movements and um, it's a nice steady state cardio to help bring down your heart rate and get you breathing properly again. All right, um, and then uh, let's see, the second stretch is gonna be the shoulder and tricep stretch. So again, I'm borrowing from the Navy 12. This is instructed to the CFLs and by CFLs in your command PTs. So you're just gonna take your arms across your body, hold that static stretch for a few seconds, and then switch, bring it back, hold that stretch. That's the shoulder stretch. Tricep stretch, we all know how to do this. And again, your, your shoulder blades, your fingers, should be right between your shoulder blades for that stretch and a gentle tuck to the rear. Just like that, boom. Hold those anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds, whichever you're comfortable with, and make sure that you don't pull so hard that you feel that pain. So it's no, it's no longer the 90s, no pain, no gain. That's not true. We wanna make sure that you're doing it comfortably and within your uh, limitations, okay? All right, next one is quad stretch, all right? So I'm gonna get down on the deck. So after a big workout like that, um, your muscles can be a little bit shaky at times, so we don't wanna ask you to have you come up on one hand, or excuse me, one leg, um, when there's nothing to hold on to. So we're just gonna come down to the deck, and we're gonna flatten out, we're gonna roll over, and then our right foot comes back to our right hand, and there we go. We don't have to worry about falling over, but we're getting that nice, deep quad stretch. Try to get those knees as close as you can together when you're doing this stretch. We don't want you out here like that because that actually loosens the tension on those quad muscles. Okay, boom. 
switch over to the left side and get that stretched out. All right, butterfly stretches, sole to sole, axle stretch to open up those hips after we just brutalized them with all those plyometrics. Gently push those uh, knees to the deck with your elbows and stretch, okay? So now, uh, I've been over this before. I'm not sure on these videos or not, but I teach it all the time in my classes where back in the day when we were in grade school and they taught stretches where we were bouncing, we're not doing that anymore. So what we can do is what's called dynamic stretching. So we come down to the limit of our movement and then we come back up nice and slow and then we go back down to the limit of our movement. And so within about three or four reps, you can actually feel those muscles, the intended muscle group stretching out. So try that with any muscle stretch and bounce nice and slow, okay? This is dynamic stretching. Boom, feels amazing, okay? Other stretch for the, la uh, for the lower legs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get down into that figure four. So we're gonna cross left leg over the right and we're gonna reach through because this looks like a four now. We're gonna reach through and grab the back of the hammies, okay? You can start like this. So with my right leg is down, you're gonna feel this on the outside of the hip and the, and the, um, the uh, quads and glutes, or excuse me, the hammies, and this is the IT band. So you're gonna feel that stretch right out there where you didn't know you had anything to stretch. Now, once you get started um, a little more advanced and you start getting better and better, you can start bringing that leg up. And again, we want to dorsiflex. So now you're gonna feel it on the outside of the left leg and you're gonna feel it on the hammies of the right leg and you bring that toe down as far as you can and you're gonna feel that through the back of that, the whole right leg. Great stretch. Switch it up. <clears throat> again, start where it's comfortable. Bring that leg up when you're comfortable and point that heel down, or excuse me, point those toes down and that heel up. Excellent stretch, okay? Then the last stretch, we're gonna get kind of the whole body. So remember that contralateral limb raise or that bird dog that we did at the very beginning where we were in table pose, we had opposing limbs go out. This is kind of the same uh, movement, except we're gonna move, uh, we're gonna move and activate and stretch the other side of the body. So this is known as the dead bug. So whenever we find a dead bug, they always have their legs up in the air. So we're gonna borrow from this. Legs are straight, arms are straight. Right arm, left leg to the deck. The other two limbs stay straight up. We're gonna rotate just like this, okay? Again, this is a coordination issue. So if you are um, lacking in the coordination, keep practicing. This will improve your mind-muscle connection, central nervous system activation, and overall coordination, not only for this exercise, but for your daily activities as you're doing your, as you're doing your thing through life, all right? <clears throat> So that is a total body workout with um, including plyometrics. So that will build the strength, the explosiveness, and the endurance that we need not only for organized sports, but for our daily lives.